I recently did a video to see if we could beat Final Fantasy X using only magic, and if we can beat it using only Seymour. And there were a ton of comments regarding Kamari on both videos. So, in today's Satanic Worship Challenge, we're going to see if we can beat the game using only Kamari, much to my shrink's dismay. So, let's talk rules. Rule 1. If Kimari is available, he must be used in the party and the other party members must be killed off every battle. If Kimari is not available, such as Dream Zanagant and the Underwater Ruins, we are not allowed to grind in any way and all battles must be skipped. Rule 2. This has to be done on the standard sphere grid to make it harder since then Kimari is locked into his own little zone. Rule 3. No item command. Just because I hate myself. This rule takes effect on the SS Leaky once we have Kamari though. Now, there are going to be a few big problems this run that were not present in the other two challenges I mentioned at the start of the video. But the absolute biggest one is going to be Biran and Yenke, since they scale off of Kimari. It is actually entirely possible to build my Kimari in such a way that it renders that fight entirely unwinnable. But we have to actually get there first, and there's going to be even more roadblocks before that. Can you guess what the two possible run enders are? Let me know down below what you think. And so, with that said, let's begin our Hornless Challenge. But hold your horses, I've got something crucial to spill before we dive into the madness. You all dig these challenges, and hey, I'm all about creating them. But let's not forget someone else sharing the agony, our stellar editor, Daff. After some serious hot heart chats, we've decided to bring her on board full time. Yep. Embrace yourselves for more outrageous challenges, supercharged videos, and even some extra special treats just for you. But there's a catch. We need the moolah to make it happen. We are not going to be using Patreon anymore because they take way too much of a huge bite out of everyone's support. So say hello to Ko-Fi. Join us there to pitch in and make sure our awesome editor isn't just surviving on bread crusts. We're aiming to gather enough funds to give her a proper monthly salary. And guess what? In return for your generosity, we're dishing out more content, early access, sweet merch discounts, exclusive supporter bloopers, and a bunch of other nifty surprises. Dive into the description below or keep an eye out for my pinned comments for all the details. Let's make this happen, people. Now, to start with, all we can do is rush through Dream Zanakand, Barge Temple, the Underwater Ruins, and be saved with no battles to ensure no extra items from the fights. Once we get aboard the SS Leaky, we finally have Kimari in our party, and so begins the run properly. I start off by making the party beat Yuna, Lulu, and Kimari, then I kill the women off. I do this because Titus and Waka have an underwater fight coming up, so I want them to be at full health. The downside here is Kimari's health gets dropped down to low, and the sin skills kill him just after the women because it took me so long to kill them. Attempt 2, 3, 4 and onwards all go the same way. I eventually get to a point of having a near god run start where the women die and Kimari is full health. I kill off 2 sin scales, even getting a crit on one of them before beginning the lancet spam to kill the fin. I get it down to just 500 HP before Kimari ends up dying though. However, this proves it's possible. My health was just too low by time I killed the scales. This means in order to get through this fight, I need to have the girls die before Kimari takes damage and then kill two scales off in one hit each, which will require a critical hit. And with that, after two hours of attempts, we get the guard run. No damage to Kamari and two crits in a row on the scales. And then lands it away on the fin and I manage to kill it just as my health drops down to 30 HP. 
I've not struggled this much in this fight since we did P-Bird. So, it's on to Killika now, where I think we can all agree I stand zero chance against the O2 and next Sin Spawn. So, I poke it first to see roughly how much damage it's going to do to me, so I can judge how far away we are, and of course, we end up getting Seed Cannon while going through the Far East. Now, the boss does around 100 damage a hit with Psy, and the tentacles each do 100 damage a hit as well. But when it opens up and gets access to Venom, it's going to poison me. So you know what that means, grinding time. Which, as you can see here, is actually much harder than you might think. We have to do this slowly, killing lizards and wasps, and then using escape. I gain a few levels and then try the boss, but poison is just way too much for me to handle with how much it damages me. Even though I killed the tentacles and spam Lancer to try and have as much HP as possible before it opened up, I just was not close. So it's back for a few more levels. I get a lot closer this time, but still just was not able to get the win. So it's another grind. But now we have a huge freaking problem. I can't get any more HP or strength for Kimari on the Sphere Grid. So if I still can't win this time, it's gonna be game over on this challenge run. And it goes well. We one shot the tentacles and lance at the boss until it's open to keep our HP up and actually get really good turn luck as we have two turns right on the hit to open it up. This means I get an extra hit in before he poisons me, which actually makes all the difference because not only do I manage to win, but I do it with just 210 HP. This means if I didn't get that free hit in thanks to my two turns, I'd have lost again. But now we can move on to Luca, right after getting the red armlet for Kimari in the Killica Cloister, and jet shot on the boat since we want to win the Blitzball game in Luca for the Strength Sphere. Extractor, we get super lucky with it, getting three insanely good crits in a row, followed by two normal hits, and then a fourth crit, which is really good considering how fast my health was going down in the fight. But at least now we can move on. Win Blitzball, and then recruit Jamal, Wedge, and Zevronso, so we can play even more Blitzball. We're going to be abusing the way prizes work. You see, the prizes are only decided when you see the Blitzball screen. Screen, which means now we have players recruited, save the game and load Blitzball up. If it's not the prize we want, close the game and reload your save and try again. Or you can also just keep resetting data in the Blitzball menu. You lose your recruited players, but that also works. The prizes we want are two level one key spheres, four teleport spheres and four return spheres. Now, I don't know if I'm actually going to need all of these, but being in Luca means we can abuse the reset data and still recruit good players. So this is the best time to get them just in case things go badly for me. And at the very least, we're going to use two teleport spheres. On Meehan High Road, we learn Fire Breath and Self Destruct from the Dual Horns and Bombs respectively, and skip Balgamine since it's optional and we can only use Kimari. Next up is Chocobo Eater, and while I had wanted to kill it, I'm afraid I got shoved off before I could really do anything. At least it's not a game over, so I just move on to Mushroom Rock. Here, I again do a little more leveling to get Kimari to steal and use, and then I use two teleport spheres for Waka and Tidus so they can learn it as well. This is for the extractor fight later, as it would make life so much easier and it means I don't need to farm for thunder weapons for them. Since born Gui time, first round goes horribly with a return of poison. We game over it after just a few turns. So I go and get an overdrive for Kimari and try again. This time I start off with fire breath to murder the arms and then lance at the head down. But it was just too much damage coming my way and eventually I died again. 
I'm kind of at a loss now. I really wanted to get Mug from Riku's path, but that's not going to help much here. I could go to Yuna's path for some white magic and extra magic stats to improve Lancet, or I could go to Orin's grid and aim for more strength to murder the boss faster. They all have downsides though. Yuna's path means I lose strength for a while. Orin's grid means I'm slow and Lancet won't do much. And Riku's path means I lack damage. But I also kind of need to go down Walker's path for accuracy. And I need to be careful of grinding too much because of Biren and Yenke later. So a wrong choice here will really screw me there. So... I decided to teleport to Yuna's grid, pick up some basic magic and advance through her first grid. This will give me about an extra 400 HP, healing spells, a little more agility and more magic stat, which I'm hopeful will be enough to one shot the head with fire breath. While doing this, I steal silence grenades from the plant mobs and petrify grenades from the lizards, along with a few smoke bombs from the garudas. Next attempt, I use some grenades to kill the arms and weaken the head. Then I spam Lancet to restore some health while weakening the head further. Once the head is nearly dead, the arms respawn. So I use Fire Breath to murder the respawned arms and the head, get a few hits in including a lucky crit, and the body is down to just over 1000 health left. Sweet, one more hit. Nope arms respawned so i play it safe because i'm close to dying and use grenades to kill the arms and the body together success phase two see more murders in okay now we go get thunder pony and move on to the fight with extractor something i'm really not looking forward to on the way to the moon flow i steal a few poison fangs as well for later three of which are used to murder extractor with zero effort although honestly speaking it probably would have been faster for me to just get the lightning strike weapons needed instead of poison fangs but i have some now for later if needed anyway so it's fine spear morph was actually way easy than I expected as well. Lancet was healing me by just enough to offset the damage from Sphere Morph until it started to use Press, a gravity-based attack which did start to lower my health very, very quickly. But Lancet was able to just keep me going until it died. Then we have Crawler, who absolutely murdered me. I lanced at the negator, but Crawler's hitting me for way too much compared to my lancet healing, and in the end, I died to Mana Beam. Attempt 2. I use a silver hourglass to inflict slow and then kill negator with smoke and silence grenades. Then I spam poison fangs on a Crawler to take it out. But now, I'm really screwed. I have next to no fangs left, and we have Seymour coming up with Anima, who likes to use pain. So, I use Petrify Grenades to murder the base Guado and set up Null Spells, then use Jump to murder Seymour before instantly dying to pain. Now, just like in the Seymour only run, I already know the only thing I can do here is to outspeed Anima, sadly. So, I do a big grind and go through a huge chunk of Yuna's grid, just past Reflect and try again. Now, I have the speed required, but I don't have the damage. I need to be careful though, Biren and Yenke is already going to be stupidly strong at this point. So with another grind to get the required damage for Anima, I really think I might make them impossible to do. After all, they will hit a point where they heal for max damage, which is all I can really do. But it's a risk I need to take now. So I grind even more and use my final teleport sphere to go over to Orin's grid for a bunch of strength. This also causes my health to skyrocket up to just under 7,000. Kimari would be super dope right now with more accuracy so he can easily hit lizards and flying type mobs, but he's also a super jack of all trades right now instead of being good in a single area. Even more reason to fear Biren and Yankee later. So, Let's try again. 
And, well, we're going to pretend this one never happened. Kimori got confused early and everybody died. Food attempt, I did not get two tunes, sadly, so died to pain again. After way too many attempts, and God for autosave is all I'm saying, we finally get the two tunes and even two crits to one shot anima. And then Seymour dies as well. For Wendigo, I use Pitchfire Grenades to kill the Guado, and then very nearly die. So I take a gamble and throw out a Smoke Bomb to hope Wendigo keeps missing, giving me enough time to lance some HP back before a few normal attacks takes care of it. Then I make a save in the desert in case I get stuck later. Since once we fight every, I can't grind Kimari until the calm lands. It absolutely sucks! I can't level him on the Val High Bridge, given how awesome that spot is. So if we game over to Seymour, then it means coming all the way back to Beaconal to level. However, while here, I use a Return Sphere to go back to Riku's Grid so I can work towards Mog. Once we get to Everett, I set a Protect and Shell before putting a Reflect on the boss, and then use Mog to steal some Water Gems, and also do some damage. To my surprise, I was dealing over 9,000 a hit. I honestly thought Everett's defense would be higher than that, but it is what it is. And it goes down in 4 hits. I didn't even need to worry about reflecting it to avoid the haste. But hey, at least I didn't get stone breathed. Then we have the worst cloister ever and two dumb fights before we're on to the high bridge, where we're meeting Seymour again. At least this time, no anima, right? Instead, he can petrify me. Yay. Murder Titus and Yuna going completely against Kimari's duty as a guardian. At this point, I feel like the real monster here is Kimari and not Seymour. Once that's done, I set up Reflect to protect me against the general spells and also break. Now, the only way I can be petrified is with Shattering Claw. So I start mugging away for some Tetra Elementals. I don't know if I'm going to need these later, but it could be handy. Eventually, Seymour puts Protect up, but it only delays the inevitable. And now we're on to Calm Lands. But this is also the calm before the storm. Our next boss is Beeren and Yanke. So I'm dreading how overpowered they're going to be right now. But first we have the Defender, who actually makes me struggle a little more than I thought. He hits pretty freaking hard and has gravity-based attacks. I mug a couple of times before I panic because of the damage and start spamming Lancet. Then I realize I'm an idiot and throw Protect up, which makes the damage more manageable. Then it's just alternating Lancet and Mug until it dies. Now on to the hard fights though. 66,000 HP and 49,000 HP. They were a little tougher than I expected. I was hoping they'd only be at around 30,000. I start out with Protect and Shell just to lower my incoming damage and then lance at them for extra overdrives for Kimari that I hadn't learned yet and used Mug a few times to whittle them down while also getting a bunch of level 3 key spheres. Once they get below half health, they also each gain new abilities, White Wind and Mighty Guard. So I also Lancey to them so I can avoid fighting Behemoths and Dark Flan later. Then I alternate using Mug and Lancet when I need healing. This was one of those fights that I got kind of lucky in, to be honest. I was really thinking about doing Monster Coucher in Calmlands, Thunder Plains and Mokalania before this fight, but now I'm glad I didn't since then they would be way stronger. Thankfully though, I managed a win, so we move on. But now, like the Seymour only run, I'm still expecting some big trouble coming up. Namely, Seymour! Who's here next? Once I get zombied, I put up Reflect to avoid his full life and reapply it whenever he uses Dispel. But with Zombie up, it means I can't heal. So I adopt a full glass cannon idea and try to kill him ASAP. Sadly, it doesn't work and I die to total annihilation. I think this method can work if I can get a few crits in. So I try again, which results in an instant game over. Third attempt, I die to total annihilation again, and fourth attempt was another instant game over. 
God, I wish I could get zombie proof or zombie reward right now, but I can't unless I use customize, which is of course not allowed. At this point, I'm at a loss. I try for hours with no luck, and I know future bosses are gonna give me more problems. So, I bite the bullet. I capture 10 of everything in the calm lands. Then I go to Remian Temple and get the Cloudy Mirror from the Chocobo race. Go back to Mokalonia and upgrade it to the Celestial Mirror and then head back into the Thunder Plains to get the Spirit Lands. Then I dodge 100 Lightning Bolts to get 2 MP Spheres, 3 Strength Spheres and 3 HP Sphere Rewards and capture 10 of everything here as well. However, just like in the Magic Only run when I did 0 second capture Chocobo to call you all out, this time I'm doing the same with lightning dodge and doing 200 dodges for shits and giggles. Now I know I have the non-encounter booster on, however I can get a no-encounter armor from the ghosts in the Cavern of Stolen Faith, so I want to save myself a little time and sanity by just using the booster. Then finally go to Makalania and capture 10 of everything. I can't do butterflies just yet though because I need the airship first before I can get the siege. Anyway, I go back and fight Seymour and still instantly game over. Second attempt was better, I used the Chocobo Wing to give me haste, and this made all the difference. We absolutely crushed Seymour with that, and all it took was 4 hours of monster capturing. Sanctuary Keeper was a non-issue, and in fact I even killed him with Lancet because I thought he still had tons of health left over, but apparently not. Spectral Keeper, not so easily. I got berserked early and then murdered by a Glyph Mine, sadly. Second attempt goes much better, I don't get berserked, and Glyph Mine does not spawn under me, letting me get the W. Now, onto you, Nalaska. I steal a stamina tablet and use it with the idea of doubling my HP. Just a shame, I completely forgot about not having break HP limit, which means I wasted the item and wasted the turn. I also set up Reflect to cover me when I'm zombied later. Then murder phase 1 with 5000 HP left. Phase 2 I brute force as well and we move on to phase 3. I have no way of healing and have to contend with Mind Blast, she also keeps removing my haste. So at this phase, I keep using Chocobo Wings and attacking every now and again. It gets to the point she's nearly dead, but so am I. So I risk it all and gamble on me being able to kill her. And I did, with just 600 HP left. I would have died here if she didn't try so many magic casts that got bounced away with my Reflect. And now we have the airship, so it's time to do butterflies and fully upgrade the spirit lands. Look, I remember what Seymour was like in my last solo character run, this time I want a good weapon for it. Before that though, we have to fight Sin. And what really sucks is both of the arms I can only hit with Lancet. That means it takes about 70 Lancets per arm to kill. And they do next to no damage to me, and Lancet gives me healed, so this was just a long, drawn-out slugfest. Next up, we have the core, and the first phase dies to a counter hit, and then the core itself goes down in a few hits. I do use a Tetra Elemental though to heal. And now we're on to Sin himself. I throw out a few Shining Gems while I'm out of range, and then whack away. Sadly, Kimari got confused and killed himself though. So I throw on a Confuse Proof armor I had and try again. This time, murdering it, no problem. Then we have Seymour again, who deals a whopping 6,000 damage to me a turn with Fire again, and I can't get the element wheels to change. So, needless to say, I eventually die. Attempt 2, I equip the Red Armlet from all the way back in Kilika, and also set up Shell. No, he only does about 1,600 damage a turn. Then I heal with Tetra Elemental and also apply Haste, at which point I kinda murder him rather easily. Now Broska's final Aeon, 
was the complete opposite of that though, dealing anywhere from 2000 to 5000 damage a hit, and me having no real AoE for the Pagodas is a bit of a nightmare. I kill the first form pretty quickly and then slowly start working on the second using my Tetra Elementals to heal, but then I get petrified, so game over. I do have a stoneproof armor though, so I equip that and try again. Second attempt, I get zombied, which means I can no longer heal. And this also means my hits get weaker and weaker as I lose health, since Spirit Lance gains damage from your HP pool. So, I have a back and forth with Jacked, even wasting a few poison fangs hoping to kill a Pagoda off, which didn't work. So I defend for Jack's overdrive and then try giving up defense and going pure offense. And as my HP drops lower and lower, I practically give up before I get a lucky crit, finishing phase two off. Once we get to Yu Yevon, it's obviously impossible to kill the other characters off, so I just defend with them instead and start whacking the Aeons out with Kimari. When we get to Yu Yevon, I forgot I don't have Zombie Striker because I'm an idiot. So we have to do this slowly and wait for him to whittle himself down with Gravager while getting some hits in and putting Reflect on him. Takes a few minutes, but he does indeed go down. But no. We have seen that Kimari can beat the main game, but what about Dark Aeons? Omega, the monster arena, can he solo that? If you want me to try, then let me know down below. And if this video gets 2,000 likes, then I'll try my hardest to do it. For now though, everybody, be sure to subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you all next week for the new video.